Reese McGuire was right when he came on record on my show and said the Boston Red Sox would turn it around on this homestand. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut former ESPN social media associate and current host of the Boston Balling Podcast. And I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed for free. Since it's free, why wouldn't you check it out and take advantage of it? So might as well tune into Lockdown Red Sox every day. Lockdown is here for you with your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash LockedOnMLB and use code LockedOnMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Happy Wednesday and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, the show where your emotions are felt. If you're thinking something about this Red Sox team, chances are I'm likely feeling the same emotion. I am unfortunately one of those people who lets a baseball team determine my mood. So I am actually in a very good mood today as the Red Sox recorded a four to nothing shutout win against the San Francisco Giants on Tuesday night. And talk about an improvement from last homestand. I mean, The Red Sox looked very bad when they had their first homestand of the season. Then they went back on the road and then seemed to have reset, gotten themselves acclimated to being back home, being at Fenway, back in Boston, knowing their routine. And now they have played very good baseball so far on this homestand. They are 7-3 and three in their last 10 games, and they've also won each of their last three games. So they are on a roll right now. I'm hoping it continues tonight. But a fun fact here about this with the Red Sox being 17-13 and 13 on the season right now, the most recent Red Sox teams to start 17-13 and 13 or better through 30 games besides this year were 2021 when they made the postseason and had this magical run to the ALCS. 2018, that year goes without saying. 2016, 2013, another special Red Sox team. 2009, 2008, and 2007, another special year for the Boston Red Sox. So every recent Red Sox team that started 17 and 13 or better through 30 games has made the playoffs. So it's very telling that they are in a good spot right now. And one of the biggest reasons why they're in the spot that they are in is because of the starting pitching rotation. I mean, this rotation still remains the best in baseball right now with a 2.00 ERA and 211 opponent average. Through the first 30 games in 2023, they had a 6.01 ERA as a rotation and 277 opponent average. Sox starters this year have allowed two earned runs or fewer in 26 of the 30 games, including zero earned runs in 13 games. The starting rotation is good, and they're going to keep the Red Sox competitive And if they can just get a little bit healthier, get their guys back, get Casas back, get Von Grisham here, get the starting pitchers that are supposed to be starting pitching back, then we're talking about a team that I feel like could compete. And I did do an episode during the offseason where I talked about how this Red Sox team could be better than people think in terms of the development of players on this team, but... I had to see it to really believe it and see it come to fruition. And so far, 
um, seeing very good things from this Red Sox team, particularly that starting rotation. And Cooper Criswell is somebody to note who's been a big part of that. He started the game on Tuesday, went 5.0 innings, gave up just two hits and zero earned runs, walked one but strike out four. And it was funny because Dave O'Brien seemed to be jinxing quite a few things in that game right after he was talking about how Chriswell hadn't given up any hits yet. Then the Giants got their first hit of the game and then they got a second hit right after that. So they follow up his comment with back-to-back hits. And then later in the game, he mentioned how the Giants only had two hits on the day and then they got their third hit immediately. So I totally believe in jinxing and he did it a couple times, but still doesn't take away from the fact that Criswell looked great. He did get the win in the game because he went five complete innings. And he really looked like he had total control. He developed a very nasty sweeper that he was going to a lot, which was nice to see. He was mixing up his pitches, and he was keeping those San Francisco hitters very confused and not being able to see him well. And that's the recipe for a good pitcher. I think he has a ton of potential. I mean, obviously still a small sample size with him, but the fact that he was called up due to injuries for him is a very good thing because he's getting more experience to be able to carry over into future games. So he was a highlight in the game on Tuesday night. And the fact that he was starting to get run support right away helped him with his confidence moving forward in the game. Because if you're a starting pitcher and you're pitching well, but your offense is not giving you any run support, it just puts a lot more pressure on you to continue to pitch even better so that you can keep it low scoring so that your offense can stay in it. So the fact that the Red Sox were putting runs on the board early in the game definitely helped Chriswell to feel balanced and feel like there was less pressure on him to come through and perform. One thing I absolutely like about him is he doesn't get rattled very easily. He knows when to take time off the mound. He knows when to throw what pitches and he has a good sense of what he should be utilizing and he seems to know what his better pitches are so that he can hone in on those and use those more so that's great in the development process and I think with Chriswell we're looking at a guy here who really has the chance to prove himself and solidify a more definite spot in this rotation now obviously you have guys like Garrett Whitlock and Brian Bayo who will come back at some point and will move back into the starting rotation and I think, you know, Chris Well has a chance to stay in the rotation even despite that because Josh Winkowski is a temporary starter right now but hasn't looked as good as a starter as Chris Well has so far. So I think Chris Well could be somebody who we see in the rotation moving forward if he continues to pitch the way that he is. His earned run average is down to a 1.65 on the season, which is great to see. I would like to see him try to generate more swings and misses and maybe start to pitch a little bit deeper into games, maybe try to push him to the sixth inning next time. He did only give up a couple hits, so I would have liked to maybe see him try out one more inning, but maybe Cora didn't want to stretch him out because he's still getting used to being in this rotation. So maybe if they ease into it and they give him another inning next time, if he's pitching well again, then they could really see if he has the capability to go deeper into games. Because if he has the capability of pitching six strong innings, that could be huge for a team that has that rotation spot kind of up for grabs right now moving forward for the rest of the season. So it would be cool if he was able to showcase that and put his talent on full display in that way. So hopefully he's able to continue to pitch well and they give him more opportunities to pitch even deeper into games than he has pitched so far, and that he can generate some more strikeouts, because if he can just generate swings and misses at a more frequent rate, that would be fantastic for him and his team. The rest of the pitchers did their jobs too. Brennan Bernardino was not in the game for that long, only went 0.2 innings and gave up zero runs, and then Greg Weiser came in for him, pitched 1.1 inning, 
gave up zero earned runs. And then Zach Kelly pitched one inning and Justin Slayton pitched one inning, both of which gave up zero earned runs as well. And that helped lead to the shutout. And the Red Sox pitching staff was just completely on point as a whole in the game. So huge credit to Chris Well and the rest of the Red Sox pitching staff for getting it done on Tuesday because the Red Sox now have some momentum that they can take into the rest of this series. Coming up, not only was the pitching good in the game on Tuesday, but there were definitely some offensive standouts who you should definitely be paying attention to for the rest of the season. Why? I'll tell you. I use DoorDash all the time for food delivery services. They just have a great variety of restaurants on there to choose from. So whatever you're craving that day, you can likely find it on DoorDash and pick a restaurant that has that type of food, and then they'll get it to you pretty quickly. And it's great. But what is also great about DoorDash is they have a really nice variety of gifts you can get for your mom for Mother's Day. This Mother's Day, get something thoughtful for mom on DoorDash. Surprise her from wherever you are with fresh bouquets, the latest tech, gift cards, self-care treats, and more to make her day that much better. Get a Mother's Day gift as unique as she is with DoorDash. Use code LOCKDOWNMLB to get 15% off your next order up to $15 when you spend $15 plus on your next flower, convenience, grocery, or retail order now on DoorDash. That's code locked on MLB. Order using DoorDash today. Terms apply. 50% off is a great deal. So I don't know why you wouldn't want to take advantage of that. So head to DoorDash today, especially because Mother's Day is just around the corner. If you're also looking for a fun way to play daily fantasy sports, Prize Picks is the exact right place for you. PrizePix is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your PrizePix entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. Prize picks has something for every sports fan, from baseball and basketball to League of Legends and everything in between. You can pick LeBron, Shohei Otani, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham all in the same entry. Download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That is code locked on MLB on the Prize Picks app, and you can get a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I love something that's easy to use and that I can also win a lot of money too. So if you are anything like that, you won't be disappointed in Prize Picks. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you-can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you want to stay caught up in all things going on in sports, then seriously, Locked On Sports Today is absolutely the place for you. The Boston Red Sox came off of a very good win against the San Francisco Giants on Tuesday in which they won the game 4 to nothing. And one thing that made that game particularly impressive is that they did it against the Giants' ace, Logan Webb. He went 3.2 innings in the game giving up nine hits and four earned runs. He also struck out four and gave up three walks. He doesn't usually walk a lot of guys, but the Red Sox were taking their walks on Tuesday and making his job harder. And the fact that they got him out of the game in the fourth inning is a great sign for this Red Sox offense. And going into the season, 
I felt like the offense was not something that was a huge concern. I actually felt pretty good about it. And I said, the Red Sox might have some question marks on this team, but I really don't think the offense is one of those question marks. And certainly now that they don't have Trevor Story and they don't have Tristan Casas, you could say that the Red Sox offense on paper might have been in worse shape without them. But guys are stepping up, especially somebody like Willier Abreu, who went three for four on Tuesday night. He scored one run, recorded an RBI, took a walk, and recorded one strikeout. But he is having such a season right now. His batting average is up to 316 with a 391 on base percentage and a 526 slugging percentage. It did take him a little bit early on when the season first started to really find his footing and people were saying that he might be a bust and that was tough to hear because I liked him going into the season. I liked what we saw from him in the small sample size that we did see at the end of the 2023 season. So I felt like going into this year, Abreu was somebody that I had a lot of confidence in and felt like could be one of the top performers for the Red Sox at the plate. And as of late, once he started to find his groove, I mean, he's been performing. And it's great to see him up there with so much confidence and he's delivering, he's getting those opportune hits and he's providing a spark in the Red Sox offense that they definitely have needed. Another player who was a standout in the game on offense was Jaron Duran, who was going through a little bit of a slump last week. And I came on the show and talked about his slump and whether it was something we should be concerned about or not. And I said, no, it's just a slump. Everybody goes through it. It's a long season. The best hitters even go through slumps. And for somebody like Jaron Duran, who had a great season last year and was having a really good season this year prior to the slump, I said, yeah, just give him some time. He'll get back into the swing of things. And sure enough, he did. Three for four on Tuesday night, scored one run and recorded one RBI. He also took a walk. His batting average right now is a 268 with a 338 on base percentage and 386 slugging. Do I think he could get his batting average over 300 at some point? Absolutely. I really like Jaron Duran. I think he is not afraid to utilize all different aspects of the ballpark. He's not afraid to lay down a bunt to get himself on base. He obviously can steal bases very well. And he knows the types of pitches that he is best with that he can absolutely launch. He's patient at the plate and he has a lot of characteristics in a hitter that we like to see. So when it comes to Duran, I knew we shouldn't be too concerned about his slump. He appears to be back now and back to being the Jaron Duran leadoff hitter that we need him to be. Rob Snyder also drove in two runs on Tuesday night. He went two for five in the game. He did also record two strikeouts, but since he's gotten back from the injured list, he's definitely been a difference maker both offensively and defensively on this team. His batting average is a 379 with a 486 on base percentage and a slugging percentage of 690. I really like Ref Snyder, always have. He's fantastic against lefties, and he just very much is great with getting some of those big hits that the Red Sox need when they need somebody to come through and be clutch. Rob Ref Snyder to me is clutch, and he helped with the hit parade on Tuesday. By the way, the Red Sox as a team recorded 11 total hits, and when they were going against a San Francisco Giants team that had their ace pitching, I did not really expect them to do what they did. If anything, I almost had this game penciled in as potentially a loss because of the fact that they had their best pitcher pitching, and I didn't know if the offense was going to be able to really work with that and hit well, but they definitely did, and those two guys stepped up big for sure in Jaron Duran and Willier Abreu and then Rob Ref Snyder recording a couple hits of his own. So it was really nice to see. And Manuel Valdez also recorded a single, which is good for him. He definitely needed that. When he does get hits here and there, it's good for his confidence because he only has a 151 batting average, a 183 on base percentage, and a 256 slugging. So I do feel badly for him because he has definitely been struggling to see the ball at the plate. So when he is able to get a hit through, I can't help but 
be happy for him. So that was nice. And then also recording hits in the game were Raphael Devers with one hit and Tyler O'Neill as the DH with a hit too. O'Neill has definitely been struggling at the plate a little bit more as of late. Was not seeing the ball very well on Sunday and was not seeing it very well again on Tuesday night. But he did manage to get one hit through on Tuesday and five at-bats. He did score a run too. He also struck out twice. He's been swinging and missing a lot lately. His batting average is still at 320 with a 433 on base percentage and 693 slugging. So it goes to show how good of a start he actually had. I mean, he was on an absolute tear to begin the season. Then he got hurt and temporarily had to miss some games. And now he's back. And I am still not anywhere close to giving up on Tyler O'Neill. I still think he's going to end up at the end of the day being one of the best hitters this Red Sox lineup has to offer, but he has been striking out quite a bit as of late, so I'm hoping he can start to see the ball better a little bit more moving forward here, and I do think that'll happen. I mean, you saw it with Duran already, players going through slumps and having to make some adjustments, but I do feel like he's the type of player who will make those adjustments. Another thing to note that happened in this game that was unfortunate was Garrett Cooper was making his debut with the Boston Red Sox. He took two at-bats, and both of those at-bats were strikeouts. Then he got absolutely nailed by a pitch right above his wrist area and, like, the forearm, and it looked super painful, and he had to pause and he looked like he was in a lot of pain. So then he was pulled from the game, and then Bobby Dahlbeck had to come in and pinch run for him and then play first base. So it was just unfortunate because the Red Sox just traded for this guy, and this was his first game in a Red Sox uniform, and a lot of people, myself included, were looking forward to seeing how he performs and what kind of difference he can make for the Red Sox in the absence of Tristan Casas. And then he comes in and he can't even play. I mean, Alex Cora did deliver some pretty good news, basically saying he is sore, but he's feeling good. So it doesn't sound like he's going to be missing a ton of time. But it's just another thing about this Red Sox team that shows that they're just cursed this season or something. He goes down and then Bobby Dahlbeck comes in. And then it's just unfortunate because... This is a guy who hopefully can provide a lot more value than Bobby Dahlbeck on the offensive side. And by the way, Bobby has made some very good plays defensively at first base. I think we definitely need to recognize that. I feel badly for him. I think the Red Sox are just completely running him into the ground, and it's not fair to him. But when you look at his defense, he definitely has made some nice plays at first base, and that deserves recognition regardless of how frustrating his bat has been. So good for Bobby for that, but it was definitely frustrating that we didn't really get to see any of Garrett Cooper, and it's just bad luck one thing after another with this Red Sox team. But Ellis Cora's update does give me reassurance that he won't be out for very long, and I'm hoping that is the case because the Red Sox definitely need a good, reliable veteran playing first base at least to bridge that gap until they do get Casas back, hopefully later this season. So... Lots of good things offensively from the Red Sox in the win against the Giants on Tuesday night. But you're probably wondering, what exactly happened to Vaughn Grisham? This was supposed to be his debut. People were excited to have him in the lineup. And why exactly was he not in the lineup? And what would the lineup look like when he is back? That's coming up next. All right. Game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for timed tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. Unique stickers you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. 
A ton include their own unique mini games like digging for treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, so get off the bench and go download it now, free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. If you are super competitive like myself, I promise you, you will get hooked on this game. So proceed with caution, but it is a lot of fun, so you should definitely download it. You should also subscribe to Lockdown Sports today as we as a network have launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. If you're looking for a way to stay caught up in all things going on in sports and don't want to have to worry about scrolling through Twitter, Lockdown Sports Today absolutely is the place for you. By the way, if this is one of your first times listening or you're wondering what the format of this show is, be sure to keep tuning in as I'm going to be starting a special series on this show honoring the 2004 Red Sox team during the 20 year anniversary season and there may be some special guests that make an appearance so make sure you continue to tune into the show monday through friday lockdown red sox is your red sox content home every day so on yesterday's show i was so excited because it was supposed to be vaughn grisham's debut with the boston red sox i went into what we should expect from him, things to look for, what some of his strengths are. And I was so excited to have him in the Red Sox lineup until late in the afternoon on Tuesday when the Red Sox came out with the lineup for the night. It was announced that Grisham has the flu and could not be in the lineup. So now after all this built up suspense and waiting for so long for him to make his debut, now it's gonna be at least another few more days because he is sick with the flu. Obviously not his fault and I've been there. The flu is absolutely terrible and not fun at all. So hopefully he gets well soon and can come and join this team because it would be a great team with him on it, especially because they are on a roll right now. The starting pitching is performing a lot better than people think. The offense is holding their own. Adding somebody in there who's expected to be very good at the plate could be great for this Red Sox team when they're in the midst of a winning streak. So hopefully they can continue the winning streak or at least continue playing good baseball until he does come and is part of the lineup. But it's definitely frustrating because – we still have to see more of Bobby Dahlbeck, especially now with this Garrett Cooper situation and not really knowing when he's coming back, what his timeline looks like. Bobby is still given the opportunity to play first base and be a regular piece of the lineup. I still am not confident that they'll send him back down to AAA when Von Grisham is activated. I still think it's going to be David Hamilton. But if it is Dahlbeck, that would be doing a lot of people a favor in terms of getting rid of a bat that has not been useful at all. So what do things look like now? I mean, Rafaela at shortstop, Valdez at second base, but then when Grisham comes back, Valdez kind of becomes the odd man out in that situation. But I still think they'd prefer to have him over David Hamilton up to fill in when needed if somebody gets injured or Rafaela or Grisham have a day off I think they would trust Valdez a little bit more than they trust Hamilton especially defensively because Hamilton has significantly struggled on the defensive side so that's why I think they will make that move Vaughn Grisham hopefully will make an appearance later this week if not next week depends how long his recovery from the flu actually takes but there's lots of exciting things when it comes to that because I do feel like people were watching this Red Sox team early on and saying, yeah, they're starting off pretty well, but they haven't really played any good teams yet, so we'll see what happens when they do. And then now they've started to play some good teams and they are winning games. I mean, the Cubs have had a good start to the season and the Red Sox took two of three from them. And hopefully now they can continue to play well against good teams. And 
Vaughn Grisham is going to be such an upgrade from David Hamilton or even Bobby Dahlbeck. So having him back will be key. But it is important to note that, you know, we've already waited a while to have him. So what's a few more days really going to do at this point? I just couldn't believe it. I was like, of all times for him to get sick with the flu is right as he's about to make his Red Sox debut and everybody's getting super excited and is ready to watch him come in and make an impact. And then the news breaks and it's like, of course, still have to wait more time now for him to join this roster. So hopefully when he does come, it's worth the wait and he makes a big impact on both sides of the ball. Like I said on yesterday's show, his defense is something to look out for that he might struggle with. But if there's a way to get David Hamilton or Bobby Dahlbeck off of this current roster right now, Vaughn Grisham's return is what it's going to take to do that. And I'm glad that the Red Sox are recognizing the weaknesses and recognizing that Bobby Dahlbeck is a liability because they wouldn't have traded for Garrett Cooper if they didn't feel that way. So they wanted that safety net at first base and they knew that they couldn't rely on Bobby Dahlbeck all season long to be the first baseman until Casas comes back. So they went and they made a move for a veteran guy who can play that position. That's great. So now the question though becomes, do they still want to hang on to Bobby even when Grissom does come back because they want that backup first baseman because Cooper can't really play every day. And that's why I feel like they'll justify keeping Bobby around as opposed to David Hamilton because Hamilton plays a position in which they have other guys who can step in and play that position in case of an injury or somebody having an off day. You can't really say the same about first base right now because of Casas being hurt. So having Dahlbeck, that might be the reason why they keep him is just to say, okay, we do need him because he has the first base experience and he's able to stay in this role if somebody gets hurt or we need to give Cooper an off day. So we'll see what happens there. But either way, I was definitely a little bit disappointed that I woke up yesterday saying, oh, it's Vaughn Grisham day. And then the Red Sox were like, JK, it's not Vaughn Grisham day anymore. So definitely upsetting, likely won't play in this series, but hopefully he's able to make an appearance in the next one and can make a big impact for the Red Sox because that would be absolutely huge if he can. Great way for the Red Sox to start the series against San Francisco. Keep that momentum going because after this, they head to a Twins team that is absolutely on a roll right now. They've won eight straight games. So the Red Sox want to go into that series with the mindset of, staying confident and staying consistent and going in with this positive energy because they've just come off a homestand that was very strong for them. So let's finish this homestand strong, hopefully win this series against San Francisco so that we're in a good spot once we do go head-to-head -head with that Twins team. Like I always say, keep the faith, go Red Sox, and I will catch you on the flip side.